Guys, this is my biggest book haul ever. Ever, ever, ever. And I'm so excited to be sharing it with you today. I had my birthday in March and I have been going to a bunch of used bookstores and stuff like that. I also got like a Barnes and Noble gift card from a family member. Some family members got me books and I also checked out some stuff from our library. So I'm really excited to show you what I picked out. I'm gonna start with cozies, I think. Let's just, let's start with the cozies, the lighthearted before we dive into the dark thrillers. So here we go. So this one was a gift from my parents and I had this, I've been wanting to try to read this. I haven't heard anything about the series. It's called Till Death Do Us Part by Philippa Nafri Clark and it's a Daphne Jones mystery. It's weddings, funerals, and sleuthing. So it sounds like Daphne Jones is like an officiant. So I think she travels from like small town to small town and she like marries couples. And in this particular one, she's helping with a wedding, but one of the members of the bridal party ends up dead and Daphne is on the case. So I'm really excited. I thought this cover was adorable. If you've read this series, let me know because I haven't heard anything about it, but it sounds so fun and I love the name Daphne. It reminds me of Scooby-Doo, so I'm all for it. This one I found at a used library book sale and I was so excited. This is Beyond a Reasonable Stout, a Sloan Cross Mystery by Ellie Alexander. This is actually book three in the series, which is perfect because I just wrapped up book one and two for my library and I'm so excited to have this. Look how beautiful this Bavarian like village is. Come on. So this takes place in Leavenworth, Washington. It's a super beautiful setting. It's got a Bavarian like inspired theme throughout the town and it's very popular for like craft breweries. And our main character is Sloane. She's got a very interesting family background. I've really enjoyed seeing her family throughout the books so far. But in this one, it's Oktoberfest, and there's actually someone running for re-election, but they're running for re-election of, like, town mayor or something on the campaign that they want to make the town dry, which is pretty interesting for a town that is known for its, like, breweries. I'm like... That doesn't seem like a very good strategy in my opinion, but this person who's running ends up dead and there's a lot of people that might have wanted them that way. So very excited for this. I'm really excited to continue seeing Sloane's family development and kind of story develop. She's a mom, she's really interesting. In the first book, she finds her husband with another woman and leaves him. So we're kind of going through that process and she's starting over and I really enjoy reading her story. This next one has like my favorite food ever on the cover, so had to get this. I found this at Goodwill. This is Murder with Macaroni and Cheese by A.L. Herbert. This is a Mahila Watkins soul food mystery and it's Murder with Macaroni and Cheese. And our main character is Mahala and she runs like a sweet tea shop. I believe this takes place in the south. No, Prince George's County, Maryland. But she also does some a la carte detective work and in this one there's like a high school reunion and the former mean girl ends up dead and she gets involved in the case. So I'm really excited for this. I, I've never heard of this again. This was just what I found at Goodwill and I was like, I gotta try that. That sounds amazing. And the mac and cheese of course caught my attention. So let me know if you've read this, but I am down for it. This is book two in the series. So I don't think I'm gonna have too hard of a time jumping in. I mean, most cozy series you can jump in. So hopefully I'll be okay. But this cover was just, I mean, even the spine, there's a little mac and cheese there. Another one I found at Goodwill was How to Wash a Cat by Becca M. Rebecca M. Hale. And this is the first in a series. And if you like cats, there's actually two cats in this series. So that is a good start, if nothing else. And our main character in this is really shocked to find out that her uncle Oscar who's passed away has left her his vintage antique store that's very remnant of like the gold rush era and it takes place in a like historic San Francisco neighborhood so really interesting setting I love the idea of an antique shop I haven't actually read like antique cozy mystery before and she ends up getting involved in the area she also starts to meet this motley crew of uncle Oscar's associates who seem to be kind of shady and she finds a puzzle that he's left her as part of her inheritance that's the premise. I was so intrigued. It's the first one in a series, so I'm super excited for this. And how how adorable is that cat? I'm so excited. I've been saying that for everyone, but I'm really excited for this one. This is The Record Shop Mysteries by Olivia Black. This is book two in the series. My library had book one, but they don't have any of the other ones. And this is A Fatal Groove. I got this at 
my a Barnes and Noble. So I love in the first book we're introduced to three sisters, the Jessup sisters, and our main character we're following is Junie. She's the youngest, but our other two sisters are super interesting, super fleshed out, and they're opening this record shop called Sip and Spin. So there's like a coffee bar and then a record shop, and it's all one business. And so in the first book they opened the place up, and in this book things are going okay. They think they've overcome the big hurdle until the mayor drops in and is poisoned by their coffee and one of the sisters is the suspect and one of them finds the body lots of drama ensues again a really cute cat that kind of haunts the neighborhood which i think is really fun so yeah i had such a fun time i really really liked it and the town it's a town in texas and it was so colorful and vivid and the way the author brought it to life I loved it. It was one of the best like locations for Cozy. I've read so far. I just really, really loved it. And the way it was brought to life, I could visualize everything so clearly. So next one I got at a used bookstore. This is The Darling Delilahs and the Texas Star by Susan Wittig Albert. This is another book in this historic Cozy Mystery series. So The Darling Delilahs are a garden club who also kind of investigates. This takes place in the 1930s in Alabama. And in this one, a circus is coming to town. And Miss Lily Dare is the fastest woman alive. She's like, she can like do these like high flying, like fast acts and stuff. And her plane is actually sabotaged on the way there. And so the darling Delilah start to get involved in the case. But did one of them actually have a motive? Because was their husband maybe involved with this woman? We're going to find out. How pretty is this cover? I didn't love the cover for book one as much, but this one is stunning. The color combination, it's so springy. I think this is going to be perfect for like a summer cozy with like the fair and the circus element. Cannot wait for this. Next, I recently read for a cozy reading blog. I'll link it above if you're curious, but I read a Thread on Arrival by Leah Waite. It's part of the mainly Needlepoint mystery series. And it was like eight books into the series, but I adored it. It was such a good book. So I went back to my library and they do have a couple of the earlier ones. So this is book one. It's called Twisted Threads. Again, it's by Leah Waite and this is the mainly Needlepoint mystery. I'm just covering my library here so don't mind that. So Angie has been called back to Haven Harbor after about a decade and her grandmother who raised her actually is calling her back because there has been a discovery in her mother's disappearance and unfortunately the discovery is tied into a murder mystery so Angie gets involved with that. Um, I found the first the book I read to be very cozy. It took place during winter. I loved the coastal setting. She has a beautiful cat and so does her grandmother so if you like cats and your cozies this is a great one and I just like the needlepoint theme as well even though I don't need point it's very cozy and crafty and I just like it so I really am excited to continue this series this next one I'm so excited for because it takes place in Sicily and I'm actually Sicilian so I'm super excited to see the setting brought to life and this is called a villa in Sicily olive oil and murder by Fiona Grace and this is a cats and dogs cozy mystery book one it's very short under 200 pages so our main character in this is Audrey. She's 34 and she's a brilliant vet. Recently she went to a high school reunion and she got turned down by an old flame she was hoping to kind of reignite, it sounds like. She's kind of stuck in life. And on a whim, she sees this advertisement for a $1 home in Sicily. I don't know when this book came out, but that seems so crazy to me. Um, but the, the catch is, is that the home needs massive renovations. And she decides to take a chance on it and go out there. She knows nothing about renovating, so she's just really... She's just going out on a limb, but she's like, I need a change. I need something new. So she's looking for love. She's looking to build her dream life, and she stumbles on some kind of murder mystery. So we're going to see that. I'm wondering how they're going to incorporate the vet element, or if that's going to be kind of dropped. But then it's called the cats and dogs mystery, so I'm like, it's got to be incorporated somehow into the story right so i'm gonna see i'll let you guys know how this goes okay and then last for the cozy mystery specific definitely check out the mystery one after this because there's still a lot of mysteries that i think cozy lovers would enjoy in that i got this one at goodwill by laura child i recently read the tea shop mystery series the first book in that and i loved it and i don't i didn't know that she had this but she has a scrapbooking mystery series and this one's called motif for murder it, it's an old library copy so it's very shiny so i apologize if it's a little a little shiny. So our main character in this is Carmela and she's a scrapbooking store owner and she's actually trying to reconcile things with her ex-husband it sounds like um, named Sean and things are they're going okay until he's kidnapped from their home and she rushes to like another room to tell like their uncle I'm not sure if it's his uncle or hers but she finds him dead. So obviously she calls the police, she's super concerned about ex-husband, shocked about the uncle, and while she's trying to keep busy, she actually puts together a scrapbook of mementos and things, and she doesn't know that there's some kind of clue that she's actually giving herself when she's putting that together. 
I'm very curious. I feel like if anyone could pull this off, Laura Childs could. So I'm super excited for this because I loved the Adosa, the main character in the tea shop mystery. So I'm really excited to meet Carmela. Okay, diving into just general mystery. Like I said, there's some classic mysteries in here. There's some ones that aren't like extremely violent or anything like that. So if you're a cozy reader, you still might find some ones that you really enjoy in here. I know I am. Oh, this one I was super excited about. This is called The Mystery of Miss Christie by Marie Benedict. And this is actually about a real life event in Agatha Christie's life where she actually disappeared for like 10 or 11 days. I've listened to some short podcasts on it or like YouTube videos and she disappeared and to this day like no one knows exactly where she went, if she had amnesia, if she was doing it to get back at like her husband's mistress or her husband or something like that. I don't know but this just caught my attention. I was like oh I love a good like retelling like this and Agatha Christie is of course fascinating to me as a mystery lover so I'm very excited to see this and how beautiful is this book? It's just stunning. And then speaking of Agatha Christie, I did buy Cards on the Table, which is an Hercule Poirot mystery. And this one's very interesting. So Hercule Poirot and three other sleuths, including a mystery writer, have been invited to play cards with four criminals who have committed murder but not been caught. And if they play the game, maybe they can catch them or something like that. But the host of this, who is very entertained by this prospect, which I would be too, I mean, that's pretty fascinating, is found dead and his murder or her murder, I don't know, their murder ends up being part of Hercule Poirot's mystery. What an amazing premise. I'm so excited for this. This one is an arc and I'm so excited. I actually won this on an Instagram giveaway that the author did on their um, Instagram, obviously for an Instagram giveaway. Um, and this is The Third Wife of Faraday House, a novel by B.R. Myers. Now I read a different book by this author. What was it called? A Dreadful Splendor and it was in my top 23 of 2023 20, for books. I loved it so much. It's not, at least that book was not super graphic. It was definitely not cozy, but it wasn't extremely graphic. So if you're not someone who, like you don't like thrillers maybe, but you like murder mysteries, I think you'd enjoy it. So this takes place in November 1816. Our main character is Emmeline and she is in love with somebody, but she gets rejected. And because she only has one really good marriage offering left and because of the times, she ends up marrying them even though they have had two wives who've mysteriously died in the past. Not so good. It's already giving me kind of Rebecca vibes and I love Rebecca so I'm very excited for that. But Emmeline marries them, she moves out to Faraday House and she discovers shortly after arriving that the second wife is not dead. So now she and the other wife are bond, like kind of bonding together to try to solve things, figure out what's going on because they both know something ghastly is going on at the house. I'm so excited for this. So we have historical fiction, a murder, like maybe a murder mystery. I don't know for sure if it's a murder mystery, but some mystery, some intrigue. Who is this husband? I don't know what his problem is, but we're going to find out. And the cover, oh, I love it. It's so beautiful. So I'm so excited. Thank you to the author. I was, I couldn't believe I wanted it. I was like, what? Really? Um, a couple more Agatha Christie's. I have Appointment with Death and Hercule Poirot Mystery. This one just looked really fun. Oh, I actually found this in like a free little library. And then Agatha Christie Midsummer Mysteries. These are short stories from the Queen of Mystery. And I actually really enjoyed reading Miss Marple, a Miss Marple collection of short stories, even though I'm not usually a short story reader. So these I thought would be amazing for summer because I am trying to read a little more short stories because I feel like there's some great options out there. But this one kind of just drew me in and I was like yes plus Ruth Ware endorses it at the top so there we go so I mean some of these take place in Egypt Cornwall the French Riviera um and of course Hercule Perot is at the you know steering wheel for this so I'm very excited how beautiful is this illustration and I have this one here this one actually takes place in Jordan on a vacation from crime and again Hercule Poirot solving a recent murder. So very excited for those. This one I've been very much anticipating. I got this from my library. I've been on hold for it for a while but I finally got it and this is Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. And as the title suggests, everyone in this person's family has killed someone. And I love how it describes it in the back. It says some of us, the high achievers, have killed more than once. I'm not trying to be dramatic but it's the truth. Some of us are good, others are bad, and some just unfortunate. Have I killed someone? Yes, I have. Who was it? Let's get started. How could you not? Like, this title is so good. Like, how could you not be interested <laughs> in, like, that premise? I'm so intrigued, and I've heard some really good things about this, and I know he just came out with a new book, I think in January I talked about, and it was set on a train, 
and with a bunch of writers, so I really want to get into that too if, this, if I end up liking this. Another historical fiction mystery that I found at a used library book sale for like a dollar, it was amazing, is The Uninvited Guest, a novel by Sadie Jones. Beautiful dress, I love this illustration. And this takes place with our main character who is a wayward daughter um, named Smudge, which is quite interesting, I've never heard of that name before, and it takes place in 1912, it's like an Edwardian, it's an Edwardian country house tale. And they have like some kind of party or event. They have an uninvited guest who arrives. And quickly a storm takes place. They're kind of stuck there. And they play this parlor game that turns very unpleasant. Very excited. Love this cover. It's absolutely stunning. Like the beautiful illustration on the back here. Love it. And then the last one for our pure mystery, there's definitely some mystery thriller type ones in the thriller section, but this one is the Twyford Code by Janice Hallett. It's time to solve the crime of the century. Now I think I saw this on Meg Loves Books channels and I think she liked it. And this one seems like it's a multimedia one. So our main character is Stephen Smith or Smithy. 40 years ago he found this strange children's book by a, um, someone named Twyford. And in the margins, there was like a code. Well, his teacher became obsessed with looking through this person's novels for other codes and seemed to make some kind of connection. Shortly after this, they disappeared. And many years later, Smithy is now out of prison and he decides to listen to these old recordings he has, visit his childhood like home and like talk to people because he thinks the teacher was onto something and he wants to know if there really is a Twyford code. Very excited. It's a really interesting premise. I don't know if it's a murder mystery technically, but I'm super excited for this. Nothing else. There's a disappearance and a mystery code, so I'm excited for okay, that. Okay, so camera died, but we are now back for the thriller portion of this video. Hair up, because the light I have on is quite warm at the moment. And this section is huge. So let's hop into it. For starters, I picked up in my free little library. If this video is already up, I will link it above, but otherwise stay tuned for this free little library vlog I'm gonna be doing. I picked up The Guest List from Lucy Foley. Now, I've actually read this. This was actually one of the first like modern thrillers I read a couple years back and it got me into thrillers. So I love this. It's really, really fun. Basically, we have an exclusive wedding on a remote Irish island. You're reading from multiple points of views, like the bride, the bridesmaid, the groomsman, etc. And you know from the very beginning that someone has died and you're flashing back and forth between the past events leading up to that moment to try to find out who is the person who died, etc. And there's a lot of drama. It's really fun. If you like Lucy Foley, if you like very twisty, fun, fast-paced, like bingeable thriller, I think this is a fun time. This one I got at a used bookstore and I was very interested. It's called The Marriage Lie by Kimberly Bell. I have read at least one other Kimberly Bell and I think I liked it. And the idea of this is that everyone has their secrets. We have our couple, Iris and Will, and they've been happily married for seven years until one morning, Iris is shocked because she gets a call that there has been a plane crash and her husband has been, who was in the plane, like he, he passed away, he's one of the passengers. But he wasn't supposed to be on that plane, at least according to what he told her. So she's like, oh my goodness, she's completely grief stricken, she's shocked, she's confused, and she's trying to unravel why he was on this plane. So I'm really excited for this. This sounds fun. I do like a good like domestic psychological thriller. And another one I got from my free little library is Behind Closed Doors, a novel by B.A. Paris, and it's The Perfect Marriage or The Perfect Lie. I haven't heard of this, but it sounds fun. Basically, we have Jack and Grace, and they're like the perfect couple. <laughs> Doesn't every thriller, like half the thrillers I know start like, oh, the perfect couple, and you're like, oh, this is gonna go badly. But Jack and Grace are the perfect couple. Grace is a homemaker. She's an excellent cook. She's gorgeous. Jack, I'm assuming, is probably like a career man or something. Um, if it's cause they seem to be like this very like traditional kind of couple. But the strange thing is, is that Grace seems to be under these restrictions. It would seem like she's a homemaker. I don't think they have any kids, but she can't meet friends for coffee in the middle of the day, which is really strange. She also is extremely slim but cooks these amazing meals. And it's like, is she eating them? I don't know. She just seems to be like, she can't answer the phone. Like she's very heavily watched and we're like, is this Jack? Is this something else? What's going on? And that's what this is all about behind closed doors. So I'm really excited. Like another domestic kind of psychological thriller, I think. This next one I found at a used bookstore for a really great price. I've read a few by this author and enjoyed them. This is by Megan Miranda. It's called All the Missing Girls. Beautiful, beautiful cover. Love 
just love that it's so pretty so it has been 10 years since nicolette left the small town 10 years since she left the man she thought she was going to marry and 10 years since her best friend disappeared unfortunately her father is ill so she returns home to take care of him but within days of coming back something similar like a deja vu has happened and another girl is missing much like her best friend was so now she's finally faced just like finally confronting this after all these years so again you can see i have a bit of a type with thrillers i love that kind of cold case let's go back to the place it started let's confront it so this sounds really interesting looks perfect for summer because it's got this like eerie ferris wheel so anything with like a fair or circus kind of reminds me of summer like spring summer so i'm really excited for this gorgeous cover super excited to give this a try i found this at goodwill for a dollar i love goodwill actually i found this shirt at goodwill too this like sweater it's so cozy and comfortable and i love the color so <laughs> i love goodwill um, this one is an al K mckidridge novel it's called no one saw by beverly long so A.L. Kittredge is a Baywood Police Department detective, and he is stumped with this case. We basically have this young girl, Emma Whitman, she's five years old. She was dropped off by her grandmother to, like, the daycare, but she's gone. She's missing, and neither the daycare or her grandmother saw anything. There's no explanation. Like, she's just, like, disappeared off the face of this earth. And so him and his partner are diving into this case, but the more they get into the case, the more they discover this family has some really dark secrets, and they're in a race against time to solve this case and find this little girl, which I really hope they do, because that, that's always... It's really hard sometimes to read um, mysteries and thrillers with children involved. I know it's fictional, but it's still, still a little hard. But this one sounded really interesting. I like the concept that like no one saw anything like there's nothing to go off of that is so strange to me like how could no one see anything especially when you have a five-year-old who I mean I don't have like kids but I feel like a five-year-old they're so little that like you wouldn't really leave them alone at any point whether you were like the daycare worker or the grandmother like you would make sure you were handing them off to another adult right I mean, you let me know if you're a parent, but that, that seems, that would be my impression at least. So I'm very curious about how this one plays out. Another one I found at a used uh, library book sale was All Is Not Forgotten by Wendy Walker. And this one has been endorsed by Karen Slaughter, who I haven't got to read yet, but I'm very excited to have heard some good things. So this takes place in a small affluent town of Fairview, Connecticut. And we're following this girl named Jenny. And one night she's at a party and she is brutally attacked. And she's given some kind of like controversial drug to help her recover but it kind of erases her a memory of the night but she's still dealing with the aftermath of like emotional like trauma and stuff so she's like i think she's like dealing with the emotions but she can't actually remember the details of the event like who did it so her father is in this place where he just is so angry he wants to get revenge and justice for his daughter while her mother is trying to like kind of hide this under the rug pretend it didn't happen and protect their carefully constructed affluent world so very interesting it's supposed to kind of it's supposed to be like a psychological thriller that like this like you know horrible crime pulls apart the threads of this little affluent town and really puts a strain on her parents marriage and then also just brings out secrets in the town and like kind of shines a light so you can see all the darkness that's actually there so this one sounded very interesting to me um i'm not sure how just as one night young jenny kramer is attacked at a local party in my head at least i'm picturing her to be like a teenager if she's going to a party but i don't really know for sure but this one sounded interesting again if you've read any of these let me know which one should i start with are there any you want me to include in a vlog let me know and then another one i found at a used library bookstore was if you knew her by emily elgar the perfect life or the perfect lie what a creepy creepy cover it's so like icy looking so this plot kind of centers around a girl named casey and one night she is admitted into the hospital because she seriously injured in this accident she was struck by a hit and run driver she's not responsive and her nurse alice Think she recognizes her and she starts to dig into her life and uncovers a dark secret that not even her husband and family know about at the same time this man named frank he has something called locked in syndrome i haven't heard of that but i guess he can like hear everything around him but he can't speak is, is what my understanding of it is but he's on the same like ward i think he's a patient there and he also has invested interest in casey's life so very interesting i'm 
curious. I want to know about the perfect lie. That premise really catches me. The dark, like, unraveling of secrets is always fun in thrillers, so I'm really excited for this. I haven't heard this author before, but I'm really excited to read her both. All right, and I have, like, five books. These are all kind of random selections that didn't quite fit into the other one. The closest, I think, this one might be part thriller, is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. It says it's a murder mystery and a coming-of-age narrative, which is why I put it in this category, because I wasn't fully sure if it was a mystery really but I know they had a movie come out and it was supposed to be like really good apparently um, and basically there is this small North Carolina town and there's this rumor about this marsh girl who lives in the marsh and this marsh girl is actually Kaya and she is blamed for this murder in the 1980s of a man in town because the police maybe maybe they're prejudiced against her because she's kind of off on her own, easy target, something like that I'm thinking. Um, and then fast forward we have two men who enter the town and they kind of intertwine their lives with her because they're really entranced by her beauty and she's starting to open up to them which sounds like is really significant because I'm imagining if she lives in the marsh she probably doesn't talk to a lot of people probably. So I'm interested in this, I'm curious, I let me know if you've seen the movie, if you've read this, I know it was everywhere at one time so I'm curious about that. Then. So last year I read the illustrated adventures of Sherlock Holmes, like a, a short story collection of Sherlock Holmes, and I loved it and it brought the book to life in a way that I hadn't had before and I really thought it helped with the more like classic, more formal language. And I found this, the illustrated Sherlock Holmes treasury, and it includes the Cle complete adventures and memoirs of Sherlock Holmes, the return of Sherlock Holmes, and the Hound of the Baskervilles. Now I do have a collection of Sherlock Holmes like this but it's not illustrated and I found this for like a few dollars at a library book sale so I was like I can I can justify that I think um yes yeah, so you just have these beautiful illustrations and I feel like it's just gonna add something you know to the reading experience and it keeps me going too when I'm reading short stories. I just like that illustrated component. It just really brings the book to life. And I'm so excited for this. So that was just when I found that. Like I immediately like snagged it. I wasn't even, I looked at the price. But I, I was like, I, I had to get this. It looks so good. Um, this one's a classic I've heard some really good things about. I don't know a whole lot about it. But the name was very familiar to me. And when I read the back I was like, oh this is beautiful. So it's by Sandra Cernos. And it's called The House on Mango Street. And it's very, this is a very, very slim book. It's 110 pages. So it says that the author draws on her rich Latino heritage, which sounds beautiful. It's a series of vignettes stunning for their eloquence. And the story centers around a, a young girl named Esperanza, and she lives in maybe a not so great place. She's, tr she's kind of feeling stuck in life. She doesn't want to belong to the rundown neighborhood she lives in and not to the expectations the world has on her and she's this is a story of her kind of rising above that. And what I love about this is I think I read this book as a child called Esperanza Rising and it was just beautiful and I believe the word Esperanza means hope in Spanish. I, I'm mostly sure. Um, let me know if I'm wrong but that was my interpretation so I think that's just the most beautiful name. So let me know if you read this. I feel like it looks just so beautiful. It's very, it's pretty like, I feel like this is going to be easy to read through. It's not very dense at all. But I think this will be very interesting. Speaking of illustrated, I found this at Barnes & Noble, which is where I got that original illustrated adventure of Sherlock Holmes. But I found Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. It's illustrated. And, yeah, this just... Oh, look at this. It's like... Like, just... That's just so beautiful. Just the little touches. I'm... Just, yep. I just love the little touch. Look how gorgeous. I mean, it just makes me want to just like, just feel the book and touch it. And I'm so excited. Um, this is a book, a classic I've been meaning to read for a while. But I just, I don't know, sometimes classics I get in my head. I'm like, sometimes just, you get, you know, you read through them slower than you do like a thriller or a mystery novel. At least I do. Sometimes because the language is a little different than what I'm used to reading. Sometimes because it's more dense whatever the reason may be. So the illustrations, again, it just like pulls me in and, and makes me want to read it. And then I always do enjoy it when I do read it. So I'm very excited. I've never read Frankenstein. I've heard it's amazing. Very excited. And then last but not least, this is a nonfiction that I've read from my library. I loved it. And I really want, I thought, you know what? I want to own it. I want to reread it. It's called The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. And I got this at Goodwill for like $2.
And this book is all about human nature and the power of habits and how to build it. It takes case studies from like the NFL, different businesses, etc. So I, I really enjoyed this. It was a few years ago I read this, but I remember really liking it and finding it helpful. There's even some like charts and stuff in here that really put things into a good perspective. And I feel like habit forming is one of the best things I could probably do for myself personally. And it's something I'm always trying to get better at because the more I can make things that are like things I want to achieve a habit or like steps to things I want to achieve a habit then I think the better off I'll be that's at least that's my philosophy I definitely have not figured out life whatsoever but this I think will be good I'm gonna reread it and just really enjoy that and thank you guys so much for watching wow that is the most giant book haul I've ever done. Thank you to any friends or family who gave me um, who gave me books directly or Barnes and Noble gift card or cash. Thank you so much. You guys enabled my um, beautiful birthday used book haul, free little library and Barnes and Noble glorious weekend, which was um, my husband asked like what I wanted to do for my birthday. And I was like, we go to a bunch of free little libraries and Barnes and Noble and like used bookstores and they use library book sale and pick up books from the library. I don't know. I don't know what most people want to do on their birthday, I guess, but that was my idea of a good time. Plus delicious Italian food. Oh, it was so good. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I do post new book content every week on my channel. And if you love anything having to do with mysteries, You'll love this channel. I talk about cozy mysteries, murder mysteries, thrillers, occasionally other books, but mostly in the mystery type genre. So definitely hit subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!